Hi there, me, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. So, I'm going to do a video that might be slightly controversial. I'm just going to preface this right now. Uh, this video is in no way intended, designed, or even to infer any disrespect to Luke Perry and his family and his experience. However, I have been seeing on the Facebook, um, on a couple of the stroke support survivor groups I belong to, a lot of talk that Luke Perry was lucky. So if you haven't had a stroke, your jaw just hit the ground and you're about to say, how the fuck can you say that? Well, we're going to explore that right now. So if you have had a stroke, you're going to understand and probably relate to what I'm about to say. If you haven't had a stroke, you're in for a bit of an education. Um, if you get offended, I, I really don't care. Because unless you've had a stroke, you have no legitimate concept of what I'm about to say. Or... Maybe a brain injury, right? Something like a neurological event that's definitively negatively impacting you. So I'm also going to say that because Luke, Perry, Luke Perry's death has, and a lot of people that have had stroke, and including myself, um, caused a lot of feeling, right? Um, and some of us, that might turn into a negative sensation. You're getting very anxious, very depressed, possibly suicidal. Please, if that is the situation you find yourself in, immediately go find someone you trust, grab them in an all-round bear hug grasp, and, and demand that they take you to help, whatever that help needs to be. Um, so, I've noticed there's an uptick after Luke Perry's stroke, and then after his death. He was in hospital for maybe four or five days. I don't know the specifics, and, and really the specifics of when he had a stroke versus when he passed is, is actually, for the purposes of this discussion, significantly irrelevant. Uh, what's not irrelevant is the experience he had to go through. So to Luke Perry, his friends, his family, his loved ones, I'm so sorry for the experience you are currently going through. I do truly understand how devastating um, a loved one from a stroke uh, and their passing is. I've experienced that myself. Um, and I have insight both from watching a family member going through a, their post-stroke journey, which was devastating to them, uh, and then my own post-stroke journey. So I, I can understand and appreciate, in some cases, why people that have had a stroke might be saying or having a conversation that Luke Perry was lucky. And that being said, let's have that discussion now. So Luke Perry had a stroke. That's Everybody knows that. Luke Perry had a stroke that was massive. We don't need to know the specifics of his stroke. Was it a hemorrhagic? Was it ischemic? Was it AVM? Was it brainstem? Was it several strokes? You know, was it an aneurysm? Like, what caused his stroke? The type of stroke he had, it, it's irrelevant. He had a stroke. He was awake when paramedics showed up. Unfortunately, he quickly got worse. Uh, from what I've read on a couple articles online. So, things went drastically south relatively quickly. He was then in hospital under observation. Well, what does that mean? We don't need to know uh, specifics. For those of us that have had a stroke, we can understand what some of that might mean. Uh, was he in, a, in an induced coma, right? Were they giving him hypothermic treatment? Uh, was he in a natural coma? Uh, was he on life support? You know, who knows? And, and again, for the purposes of this conversation, it's irrelevant. What we do know is that a celebrity, someone that is a public figure, um, that people have been a fan of, idolize, follow the work of, you can find anything about Luke Perry that you pretty much want to, where he was born, the street he lived on, you know, whatnot. Well, he's only 52. And really... One of the talking points on the media was, well, he's young for a stroke. Well, no, he's not. I know four-year-olds that have had stroke. I know seven-year-olds that have had strokes. I know 17-year-olds um, that have had strokes. I know 30-year-olds that have had strokes. I know a 48-year-old, me, that had a stroke. So, was he too young to have a stroke? Well, someone should have really told the stroke that. So, he's... Yes, we all equate stroke with being an old people thing. You know, you get in your 70s, you get in your 80s, you stroke out, right? 
my grandmother was 84 when she had her massive stroke. She had some TIAs before that, but she had a massive stroke at 84 that should have probably killed her. It didn't. Um, she was in nursing convalescent care for 20 months-ish after her stroke. Um, she eventually had another stroke and then passed due to that. But after her stroke that probably should have put her in the ground, it, she had some significant deficits. Her and I probably had the same stroke. I'll be quite honest. She had mobility issues and, you know, she had language issues. You know, she had, um, you know, a bunch of issues. So she probably had a left brain stroke such as I did. My advantage was people watched me go down. They could get me to treatment. We didn't know how long she'd been down for. So there was nothing we could have done, right? Unfortunately. Or the doctors could have. So... Why is your family member that's had a stroke is saying Luke Perry's lucky? Well, one, that's frustration. Right? I, I, on a daily basis, get frustrated with my new life. And, and that's not me looking for a pity party. That's not me looking for you know sympathy. Because if you want sympathy, in my opinion, you can find it in the dictionary between shit and syphilis. Um, because... Regardless if it's a mild stroke, a moderate stroke, a massive stroke, whatever, you've survived a stroke. Your world is irrevocably rocked. Your world is irrevocably not the same. Um, you can have a reasonably close facsimile to your previous life, but it's never going to be the same. Um, be it constant headaches. Be it you're not allowed to drive again. Be it you have mobility issues. Be it you're in a wheelchair. Be it... Um, you're now on 15 medications you were never on before, be it the fatigue you get, be it ambient noise, be it fluorescent lights, be it you can't taste food properly again, be it you can't put on silk anymore because it feels like sandpaper. Uh, there are so many things that can change after a stroke. So when your loved ones are saying that Luke Perry had it lucky, there's a couple of reasons behind that. One, they're frustrated. They're, they're extremely frustrated. Two, they can remember what they used to be able to do versus what they can do now. You know, like, you can remember being able to tie your shoes, but you can't now. You can remember people's names, but you can't now. Um... You can remember being able to walk to the store, but you can't now. You can, you know, whatever that thing is you remember, but you can't do now, that's what your family member, that's one reason why they're talking. Another reason is anxiety, right? It's someone important in the world, so to speak, right? It's a celebrity, um, you know, so unfortunately, the media, what it is today, the world knew within minutes of him being admitted to the hospital, Luke Perry had a stroke. The world knew again within probably an hour or so of him passing that he had unfortunately passed away from his stroke. So there's that, right? You get that anxiety of like, oh shit, can I have another stroke? Because like he's not that young and he had a stroke. So there's a lot of reasons why people might be saying that Luke Perry had it lucky, right? Because he unfortunately will never get the experience of living in a post-stroke world. So some of that could be depression. Legitimately could be depression. Some of that could be you were depressed or you are depressed. You're not willing to recognize the fact that you're depressed. And this is simply tip of the iceberg. Right? This is this is the event that is showing the world that yes, you are still depressed, or yes, you are depressed. In some cases, it's it's going to be natural for someone that's had a stroke that wants to discuss their post-stroke world and their frustrations, right? Um, it's not looking for a pity party. It, it's not looking for sympathy. It's looking for empathy because my, my post-stroke world and my pre-stroke world, they're pretty close. Like they're, they're not that far apart some days and other days it's as wide as the Grand Canyon. So I get frustrated. Um, so, 
the reason why your loved one who's had a stroke that might be seriously impacted by the Luke Perry journey and his story um, and his unfortunate, untimely passing. The reason why they're saying Luke Perry had it lucky is they're anxious, they're frustrated, they're confused, they may be depressed, right? And in some cases, they just need an ear, someone who's going to be empathetic and non-judgmental to listen to their concerns, right? Someone who's just willing to accept the fact that I need 10 minutes to vent, you know? I need 10 minutes to tell someone my story, my journey, uh, where I'm at thus far. And I'll be honest, I was never a fan of Luke Perry. It, it, he never did anything that I was interested in. I, I didn't follow him. If you were to say the name Luke Perry, uh, I before this, I probably couldn't name a sing single thing he was in. Um, and that's neither here nor there. Then I'm not here to slag him or, or you know, throw shade in his direction or belittle or berate him in any way. It's just my experience in, in regards to him. However, when I realize he's not that far off my own age, um, when I realize, you know, he's probably fairly healthy, when you realize that he's probably one of the few Americans, you know, I'm a Canadian, so I'm going to say something about American healthcare. He's probably one of the few Americans that can truly afford everything that might need to happen because of a stroke. So money's not an issue in this case. Like he can afford the two to three hundred thousand dollar health bill that's about to show up. Um, and that's the states, right? In Canada, I've done a video on that. On you know, what my stroke cost me, it's drastically not that amount of money, not even close. Um, so he had some advantages that your average American will never have. They have the money to afford the machine that goes paying and all the doctors and all the hospitals and all the treatments and all the rehabs. His his last concern would have been, how am I gonna write that check? So, when, when people talk about Luke Perry was lucky, really was he, right? Do you remember when you had your stroke? That feeling of helplessness? He had that. Do you remember when you had your stroke? That feeling of sheer fucking terror? He had that. Do you remember the anxiety you got when you had your stroke? Like, in the bargaining you did? Like, this isn't happening. No, 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 this is not happening. He had that. Right? The only thing that you as the stroke survivor, or in my case, assaulter, because I'm not surviving this bitch, I'm fucking getting in the face of it. Um, the only di the only thing different was he didn't get to come home from the hospital. In some ways, yeah, okay. I'll, 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 I'll give you two minutes on that he was lucky. So, he didn't have to learn how to walk again. He didn't have to learn how to feed himself again. He didn't have to learn how to talk again. He didn't have to have scars on his body and shaved head from various medical procedures. He didn't have to have, you know, mass amounts of shitty fucking hospital food. He didn't have to meet a physiotherapist. He didn't get to meet an occupational therapist. He didn't have to do speech and language path. He didn't have to do a whole bunch of things. So in, in some regards, yeah, he's lucky. He didn't get to do the post-stroke journey, right? Um, his unfortunately ended in the hospital. But his friends and family still went through the same series of emotions that yours did. You know, when someone had to call your family and say, you know, you've had a stroke. When someone's had to call your friends and tell them you've had a stroke. When your friends and family have that, that shock and awe moment that, what, what just happened? Did you just say stroke? You did. You know... His friends and family still had to go through the range of emotions, the range of bargaining, the the fear, the frustration, the anxiety, the sense of the unknown. They still had to endure everything. Was he lucky? I don't know. I'm going to say no, he wasn't. Right? Will there be people that will try to argue the fact that he was lucky? Yeah, they will. I'm going to disagree with you. 
But what I think we can do, and what we should do, in regards to taking away from Luke Perry's death and his stroke and his stroke experience, I think what we should do, <clears throat> and, and I mean we as in the royal we, hum, hum, hum. right? Um, I think we should take away some awareness from this. We should take away some education from this. We should take away a little bit of knowledge from this. Anyone can have a stroke. 52, 48, 30, 17, 4, 75, 85. Any, any, anyone can have a stroke. But strokes... Unfortunately, come in many shapes and sizes, and the outcomes will be drastically different. Um, that regardless of how old you are, the, the type of stroke, the, the expected outcome from the stroke, that recovery is a possibility. Right? That people that have had a stroke, we do mourn our old self because you may never get back there again you may get close you may get very close it, or you may not you could do that with inside two years or it might take you eight years right there is no definitive timeline on stroke recovery I've done a video about that too um, that with a little bit of patience understanding consideration education and empathy people around those that have had a stroke can be a definitive positive influence in, in a, a great assistance and supporter of those doing their post-stroke journey. And ultimately, we need to recognize the signs and symptoms of a stroke. And with knowing those, we can increase the intervention time. So, if you happen to know someone that's going through their own post-stroke post journey, or you know someone that's supporting someone going through a post-stroke journey, please point the channel out to them, like, share, subscribe, hit that little bell so you get the little ding, 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 dingy, 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 when the, um, the videos get uploaded. And if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you, the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being someone who appears befuddled or confused or has lost their sense of balance, someone who's having vision problems, they can't see it in one eye, they see grayscale, they see a little, little dot in the world, you know, they can't move their eyes left, right, up, down. Someone who's having facial droop, they can't raise both arms equally, effectively, or at all. They have slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context. Um, they have general body weakness, weakness on one side, inability to stand unaided. Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.